Hey everyone, today we are going over how to check a contactor. So the way this starts out is your machine sh or equipment should be calling for a coolant pump to run or a hydraulic pump to be running and it's not running or it's not running properly, it sounds funny. And uh, so the first thing we do is we go to the electrical cabinet where the contactor is located. Sometimes there'll be a buzzing sound coming from them. This is normally a characteristic with an AC contactor, more so than a DC contactor, but it can still happen. The second thing you'd look for is around the front of the contactor, around the casing, you might see discoloration or signs of smoke or burning, which is a clear indicator that there's something wrong with the contactor. If visually and audibly everything looks fine, then at that point, make sure to turn power off to the cabinet before performing any other checks on the contactor. So the first thing we do we'd end up checking to make sure that the contactor coil is receiving the proper voltage. So in other words, the machine control is signaling the contactor to actually pull in. So what we do with your multimeter, make sure it's turned to the volt setting, and you check your coil terminals to make sure that the, co the contactor is getting the proper signal. If it's not, chances are there's a problem further upstream, whether it's a control relay, that operates the contactor, or if there's a PLC in the picture that controls the control relay, which controls the contactor, the PLC may have a problem. But provided we make this check at the coil and it checks out okay, now we have to go down into the contactor itself. So at this point, power to the machine or the control cabinet is turned off because now we're gonna be checking areas that have high voltage. So at this point, turn the multimeter to the ohms setting, right? So we're going to start measuring the resistance of the contacts themselves. And this normally with most contactors can be done manually. There are, there's probably a handful of contactors where this has to be done by applying power or a signal voltage to pull the contactor in, but 90% of the times this can be done by hand. So in the case with no power to the cabinet, we first want to check across each leg of the contactor with the meter set to ohms. And right now we're reading open, which we should read open because the contactor is not turned on. If at this point you go and check across the contacts and you do get a reading, then that's a sign that the contactor is bad because your contacts are welded shut, right? With power off, they should be open. If you go and check these and you're reading, you know, getting a reading on the ohm meter, they're welded and then at that point replace the contactor. But so we check across the first set of contacts and manually check the contacts and we are reading 0.1 ohms, which is a good reading. You might read a higher reading, but in which case you want to check your leads first because some meters have a inherent resistance in the leads. So you put your leads together and you're reading two ohms on your meter when you go and check the contacts and you do your contact check, if you read 2.1, you subtract that initial two ohm reading that you had with just the leads. Because that's that resistance is inherent in the leads, so you have to take that out of the picture and your actual contact reading is 0.1 ohms, which is a good reading. You do that with the next set of contacts. And in this case, I'm pushing down the actuator in the front and I have an open reading, which means that there is a failed contact in this contactor. We have no continuity through that contact, which the contact could be broken or it could be severely burnt on the inside to where we are not conducting electrical current through that contact, at which point this one's done. But let's check the third one anyways while we're at it. We have 0.1 ohms, which is a good reading. So today we went over how to check a contactor if it is suspected of being the problem with something not operating correctly. We started off by a quick visual audible check on it, checking the coil for resistance, checking the coil to make sure it's getting the proper signal from the machine side, and then checking the contacts themselves. If at that point you're still uncertain or if it is determined that you do need a new contactor, you can always contact us at All World Machinery Supply and we'd be glad to help you out.